Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the equivalent annual annuity. This is a technique used in capital budgeting to decide between projects that are mutually exclusive. And by mutually exclusive, we're talking about projects that cannot both be invested in. You have to choose one. With making investment decisions, there are various techniques that are used, which include the net present value, we have done this lesson and you'll find it in the link in the description below. The internal rate of return, we've also done this one. The payback period, the profitability index, and we have the equivalent annual annuity. Now, all these lessons, we have done them. You'll find them in the links in the description below. But what exactly are we looking at with the equivalent annual annuity? Well, the equivalent annual annuity, also known as the equivalent annual cost, or the equivalent annual benefit, and these are various terms that would be used. With the equivalent annual cost, they are mainly looking at the cost that you will incur during the lifetime of the investment, and the equivalent annual benefit are the benefits that you will be receiving. But these are various names that are used with the equivalent annual annuity. It is a method that evaluates mutually exclusive investments that have different life terms. Now, very important, the projects have to be mutually exclusive, and they have to have different life terms. It shows the average annual cash flow that can be generated from an investment, assuming that it was an annuity. That is what the equivalent annual annuity assumes, that the investment is an annuity, meaning you can reinvest in the same project over and over again. The method shows the project that is most financially efficient. If we're going to invest in one of two projects, which one will be more financially efficient? And that is what the equivalent annual annuity will tell you. So what is the decision criteria for the equivalent annual annuity? Well, for mutually exclusive investments with different time periods, the investment with the highest equivalent annual annuity should be selected. And remember, the investments have to be mutually exclusive and very important they have to have different time periods. If you're looking at two possible investments and they're mutually exclusive, but they're both for the same time period, let's say both for five years, then the equivalent annual annuity won't work. You'd rather use the net present value for that one. But if they have different time periods, then equivalent annual annuity is the correct one or the proper one that would give you a proper analysis. And for a single investment, well, if you're asked to calculate the equivalent annual annuity for a single investment and the equivalent annual annuity is greater than zero, then we should accept the investment because it will enhance the value of the business. An equivalent annual annuity of greater than zero is equivalent to a positive NPV. And if you're still looking at a single investment and you're asked to calculate the equivalent annual annuity and it's less than zero, then we should reject the project because the project will reduce the value of the business. An equivalent annual annuity of less than zero is equivalent to a negative NPV. I hope that has made sense with analyzing the equivalent annual annuity or using the equivalent annual annuity to make decisions. So what is the formula for the equivalent annual annuity? Well, here it is. The equivalent annual annuity is calculated as the NPV or the net present value divided by one divided by cost of capital or the interest rate that you are given. And then you have one minus one divided by one plus the interest rate to the power of the number of years or the number of periods. And this is the formula that you will use to calculate the equivalent annual annuity. You will note here that you will need your net present value for you to calculate the equivalent annual annuity. So you'll need to be able to calculate that before you can calculate the equivalent annual annuity. Another way to calculate the equivalent annual annuity is by taking the interest rate multiplied by the net present value divided by 1 minus and then you have one plus the interest rate or the cost of capital to the power of negative n meaning negative number of periods so if you're looking at six years it's going to be minus six years as the power you raise it to 
So these are the formulas you will use. Now you can choose whichever one you would like to use. I've seen a lot of students using the top one, but the bottom one is a much simpler one to use. But if you use any of the two formulas, you should arrive at the exact same answer. So let's get into an example and see how we calculate the equivalent annual annuity. Here we are given an example, we are told that Kiriswa Limited has come across two projects it would like to consider investing in. The two projects are mutually exclusive. The entity's cost of capital is 10% and we are asked to calculate the equivalent annual annuity. Now if we look at two projects here, we have the first project on the left and it's Project Pocot and it's for six years and that's the time period as you can see and on our right we have project Kayo, and it's for four years now you can see that these two projects have got different lifespans okay one is for six years and another one is for four years so we know that we can properly use the equivalent annual annuity and we are also told that the two projects are mutually exclusive meaning we can't invest in both projects at the same time so we have to calculate the equivalent annual annuity. Now, the first thing that we have to do is to calculate the net present value. You can see very clearly, we are given the initial investment and we are given the cash flows from year one to year six. And that's the same for both projects. So for us to calculate the net present value, you can either use the table or you can use the financial calculator depending on which one you're using, or you can use Excel to do that. Now here we're going to use the table to do so. I'm not gonna display the table here. I'm hoping you know how to do that. Well, as we can see here, the cost of capital is 10%. So you will look at 10% and we'll look at each specific year for the first year, for the second year, for the third year, all the way to the sixth year, what the present value factor is. Well, I've already looked them up and here they are from year one all the way to year six. And by the way, in our lesson on the net present value, you'll find it in the link in the description below. We go into this in great detail on how to calculate the net present value using the table. And now that we have the present value factor, all we need to do is to multiply the cash flow for each specific year with its present value factor. So for the first year, it's going to be 30,000 Rand times 0 0.9091. And we get the answer and we get the present value for that cash flow. And we go all along to the sixth year. So what is our answer going to be for each year? Well, I've already multiplied them. And here we go. For the first year, you can see 27,273 Rand all the way to the sixth year, 16,935 Rand. Well, if your answer is a bit different to mine, then it's because of drowning of differences. None of us will get it wrong, but it should be very close. So if you want to get these present values, by the way, without even looking at the present value factor, without going to the table, here is a formula that you can use to do that. And you can see it here. It's the cash flow for each specific year. So let me take, for example, cash flow at year two is 35,000 rand. So it's going to be 35,000 rand divided by one plus the interest rate or the rate or the cost of capital, which is 10%. And then we raise it to the power of N. N is the specific year we are dealing with. And in this case, it's year two, as I mentioned. I'm looking at year two. So it would be 35,000 divided by one plus R or one plus 10% and raise that to the power of N, which is two. And it would give you this 28,924 N. Okay, that's just a side note. I was just telling you that in case you want to be able to calculate your present values without looking at the present value factor or without looking for the tables or going to the tables. Nonetheless, Let's continue. Once you have the present values for each specific year, what I like doing, and you'll find that was the case when we're looking at the net present value lesson, you will see that after year six or after our final year, we put our initial investment in brackets. So let's do that. There is our initial investment. Remember, we're given the initial investment, which is 115,000 Rand. We put it in brackets here at the bottom. And remember, we don't discount it to today because the initial investment is what we'll be investing today. So it's the value today anyway. And then once we have that, we just total up this present values column. So we're going to take from year one, 27,273 Rand all the way to negative 115,000 Rand and it's going to give us our net present value. So once we have that, we have our net present value. I have just calculated or summed up everything all the way to initial investment. It gives us a net present value of 13,000. 268 rand 50 cents you can see our net present value is positive and what does that make our equivalent annual annuity 
Well, if there's anything we know about the equivalent annual annuity so far is that it's going to be positive because our NPV is positive. Okay, now let's quickly rush and do the net present value for project two or project KO here on our right. We have the cash flows from year one all the way to year four. Remember the term for the second project is only four years. So we put our present value factor. It's exactly the same present value factor because the cost of capital is 10%. The entity's cost of capital is 10%. So we'll use the 10% for both projects. So our present value factor, as you can see, it's the same for Project K as it is for Project Pocot because the interest rate is the same or the cost of capital is the same as I've just mentioned. And then we just multiply the cash flow by the present value factor and it gives us the present values for each specific year. And once we have that, we make sure we put our initial investment as a negative and there we go, 100,000 Rand as a negative. And all we need to do is to sum up this last row the present value rows all the way to the bottom of the initial investment as a negative and we have our net present value and you can see it's eleven thousand four hundred and twenty eight rand fifty cents now that we have the net present value for both projects we can calculate our equivalent annual annuity now in your example maybe you are given the net present values for both projects that makes your work very easy but Let's say you were comparing both projects and you were to make a decision based on the net present value. Which project would you select or would you choose? Well, you can see that the project Pocot or the one on the left has got a higher net present value, meaning we would select project Pocot. Okay, based on the net present value, we would select this first project because it has a higher NPV. But we know it's not as simple as that. And that is where the equivalent annual annuity comes in. Because Project Pocot is taking us longer for us to recoup all our cash flows. It's taking us six years, while Project Kayo is only taking us four years. So we need something that can compare apples with apples, if you will. And that is the equivalent annual annuity. Now let's bring up our formula again for the equivalent annual annuity. It's the NPV. So we're going to do this for both projects. For Project Pocot is going to be NPV, which is 13,268.50. We divide that by the sum of the denominator. And remember, we include everything. Remember to calculate it properly because if you do not calculate your denominator well, then you may get an incorrect answer. So it's the NPV 13,268.50 divided by 1 divided by the 0 0.1 or 10%. And then you've got this big bracket, so you've got 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1 or 10%. And we raise that to the power N for Project Pocot. The N there is 6 years. And that will give us our answer. And what is our answer? Here we go. We've taken everything and we've plugged in everything here. And we get an equivalent annual annuity of 3,046 rand 55 cents. That is the equivalent annual annuity for Project Pocot or for the first project which takes us six years. And now let me put in my equivalent annual annuity here at the bottom. There we go, 3,046 rand 55 cents. Now, if you were to use the second formula or the shorter one, or you'd prefer to use the second one, here is how it would look. You will have your rate times the NPV, which is the 0 0.1 times 13,268.50. And we divide that by 1 minus 1 plus the rate, which is the 0 0.1 or 10%. And we raise that to the power negative 6 years. Okay, remember to put it as a negative and you get the exact same answer over here. Okay, so whichever formula you choose to use or you prefer, then stick with that one and work through all your examples using that one in order for you to master it and to make it easier so that when you're faced with an exam situation, you know which one you'll use and which one you can use faster. So that is how it would look with that formula. Now let's look at Project KO and see what the equivalent annual annuity is. So let's remove the first one, Project Pocot. We've already put here the equivalent annual annuity. 
how would it look for Project Kayo? Well, we're going to have our NPV, which is the 11,428.50, and we divide that by 1, divide by 0 0.1. Remember, the cost of capital is the same. And then 1 minus 1, divide by 1 plus the 0 0.1, and we raise that to the N. The N this time is the 4 years, because we are looking at Project Kayo. And what is our answer? Well, here it is. We have 3,605 rand. 36 cents that is the equivalent annual annuity for project Kayo. so again let me put the equivalent annual annuity here down here so you can easily see it 3605 rand 36 cents and let's say you were to use the second formula once again here's how it would look you have 0 0.1 times the npv of 11428 rand 50 cents and once you have that answer you divide it by the sum of one minus open bracket 1 plus 0 0.1 which is the cost of capital and you raise that to the negative 4 because for project Kayo, the number of years or the life term was 4 years but remember it has to be a negative 4 that you raise it by using the second formula i hope you can easily visualize which one is a better one to use and which one you'd prefer using now based on the equivalent annual annuity for both projects which one would you select and you can see for project a or for project pocot the equivalent annual annuity is 3046 rand 55 cents and for project kayo the second one it's 3605 rand 36 cents well we would obviously select project kayo because it has a higher equivalent annual annuity very interesting isn't it because the net present value for project pocot is actually higher than project Kayo. so based on the net present value would select the one on the left project pocot but based on the equivalent annual annuity would select project Kayo because it has a higher equivalent annual annuity meaning on average we can expect to recoup 3605 rand 36 cents which is higher than the first project or the project on the left i hope it's making sense i hope it's made sense remember the projects have to be mutually exclusive and the life terms have to be different now if both projects were for four years then we would not use the equivalent annual annuity we just use the net present value like i have been saying so let's quickly look at the advantages and the disadvantages of the equivalent annual annuity well, first, the advantages. What are the advantages of the equivalent annual annuity? Well, it takes time value of money into consideration. And you will see that the advantages and disadvantages of equivalent annual annuity are very similar to the ones for the net present value. So it takes time value of money into consideration. It takes into account the life term of the project. This way, it's different from the net present value. It considers the life term of the project. You are able to select one holistically by taking into account these factors. It takes risk into account and that's by using the cost of capital or the WAC that you would use in your question. And it helps you rank projects based on the average annual return or how much you will recoup. And what are some of the disadvantages of equivalent annual annuity? Well, it's only useful on investments that can be repeated. If the investments that you are looking at cannot and will not be repeated, then the equivalent annual annuity is not the best one to use. So it assumes that the investments can and will be repeated over and over again. So that's when it's only useful. It makes the assumption that investments can be repeated indefinitely. And that is the assumption that the equivalent annual annuity makes. The method further assumes that the entity will be interested in repeating the project into perpetuity. So what this means is that the method that you're using, you're assuming that you will be repeating this project over and over again, but the entity may not be interested in doing so if it can even repeat the same project over and over again. It makes the assumption that the initial investment and cash flows will remain the same for reinvestment. And obviously, that's not realistic. The initial investment and the cash flows will not always remain the same due to factors such as inflation and obviously things changing very rapidly over time. I hope it has made sense. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you've gained value from it and you now know how to calculate and how to analyze as well as the advantages and the disadvantages of the equivalent annual annuity. If you have indeed gained value, please subscribe to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time cheers
Come <laughs> on.